Hi there, this is Al24 News live from Algiers, coming up next now news program. Diplomats negotiating in Vienna to revive Iran's 2015 nuclear deal with world powers have closed after five days of talks after EU and US concerns. Plus. Europe crossed 75 million coronavirus cases as the region braces for the new Omicron variant at a time when hospitals in some countries are already strained by the current surge. And finally, militants killed at least 31 people in central Mali when they fired on a bus carrying civilians heading to a local market. The President of the Republic, Abdel Majid Tabun, chaired today, Saturday, the opening of the work of the National Conference on Industrial Revival at the Palace of Nations. The conference, organized by the Ministry of Industry, will take place from the 6th, 4th to the 6th of December under the theme Together to Take Up the Challenge. It should be noted that the workshops and the debates within the framework of this event will take place at the International Conference Centre. The 8th High Level Conference, which took place in Oran, has come to an end today, Saturday. The conference, which was organized by Algeria, discussed many issues such as peace and security in Africa. Nabil Khazini. The proceedings of the 8th High Level Conference on Peace and Security in Africa concluded Saturday in Oran under the title Assisting the New African Members of the United Nations Security Council to Prepare for Addressing Peace and Security Issues on the African Continent. The high-level conference was attended by the member states of Peace and Security Council of the African Union, as well as African members of the UN Security Council, experts and high-ranking representatives of African bodies, the United Nations and the League of Arab States. The proceedings of this summit took place through sessions during which the participants discussed many issues, such as coordination to support the Voice of Africa and the UN Security Council, government and good governance in Africa, the threat of terrorism in the African continent, and improving mechanisms to combat this issue. Improving coordination between Peace and Security Council of the African Union and the A3 group of Kenya, Niger and Tunisia. In addition to the new member of the Caribbean region, Saint Vincent, and the Grenadines. The proceedings aim to support Africa's voice in the UN Security Council of the United Nations. The seventh round of the indirect talks between Iran and the United States ended up after days of talks on reviving the 2015 Iran nuclear deal. Negotiations in Vienna aimed at reviving the Iran nuclear deal are set to be suspended Friday so that European diplomats can review proposals by Iran. Ayat Usama. The seventh round of talks between Iran and the Joint Commission, which includes Germany, France, Britain, Russia and China, takes place this Friday with the aim of reviving the 2015 deal. The talks are meant to set Iran and the United States fully back in the deal. The U.S. former President Donald Trump abandoned the deal in 2018, and the two nations seem pessimistic and chances of reinstating the deal sound low. Iranian negotiators mentioned in the last talk that Iran demanded the removal of all sanctions of the USA and the European Union that have been imposed on Iran since 2017, accusing it of enriching uranium in undeclared areas for weaponry purpose. Iran's Foreign Ministry Deputy Ali Bagiri explained that the USA and its allies should give guarantees that no new sanctions would be imposed in the future. On the Chinese behalf, China's permanent mission in the United Nations tweeted that the USA should lift all the sanctions that they considered inconsistent to the deal of 2015. Antony Blinken on a statement didn't show any optimism over the talks, especially after the last demands of Iran about sanctions removal. As quoted by Iranian media, Hussein Amir Abdel Hayyan, Iranian foreign minister, mentioned that they went to Vienna seeking serious negotiations with a solid determination, but they were not very optimistic about the intention of the United States. This meeting between Iran and the other Poles in a form of indirect talks between Iran and the United States wraps up this week's talks. However, no clear answers can be decisive over the nuclear issue in the region. U.S. President Joe Biden has vowed to hold a lengthy talk with his Russian counterpart Vladimir Putin on the issue of Ukraine while insisting he will accept no red lines from Moscow. Hazan 
U.S. President Joe Biden has vowed to make it very difficult for Russian President Vladimir Putin to make military action in Ukraine. Biden revealed that his administration is putting together a comprehensive set of initiatives to curb Moscow's aggression, including new sanctions. I believe to be, will be the most comprehensive and uh, meaningful set of initiatives to make it very, very difficult for Mr. Putin to, uh, to go ahead and do what people are worried he may do. Biden told reporters upon his departure to Camp David on Friday that he does not accept red lines from anyone. Do you accept Putin's red line on the train? I won't accept anybody's red line. White House Press Secretary Ann Psaki explained what Biden meant by putting together a set of initiatives to make it very, very difficult for Russian President Vladimir Putin to invade Ukraine amid rising tensions on the border between both countries. He means by a, a group of us, a package is uh, there's a range of tools at our disposal. Of course, economic sanctions are an option, uh, but we are going to do that in coordination with our European partners, with Congress. Those consultations have been ongoing and we just want to be prepared. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken also stated that Putin is the decision maker in Russia and that it is important that Biden himself will tell Russian president that the U.S. is determined to stand decisively against any reckless actions that Russia may pursue and to defend the territorial integrity of Ukraine. President Putin is the decision maker uh, in Russia, and it's very important that um, uh, he hear directly uh, from President Biden. So I think... Uh, when they speak, uh, the president will, will lay out pretty much what I've shared with you, uh, which is, first, our strong desire for greater uh, predictability and stability in the relationship, but also our determination, not as a, not as a threat, but simply as a fact, to, um, to stand up resolutely against any uh, reckless or aggressive actions that Russia may, may pursue, and also uh, to defend uh, the, the territorial integrity, the sovereignty, the independence of Ukraine. It has been reported that the White House and the Kremlin are close to arranging a conversation between the two presidents. Russian authorities say a date has already been agreed upon but decline to say when. An investigation has been opened with Bolsonaro over his statements about the link between corona vaccines and AIDS. The Brazilian Supreme Court has ordered the investigation of the country's president Bolsonaro over his statements about the alleged risks of contracting AIDS due to the anti-coronavirus vaccines. As fears of the new Omicron variant rose in Europe, the region has exceeded 75 million coronavirus cases. The European Union's public health agency has warned that within the next few months, Omicron could be responsible for the serious increase of COVID cases. Zara Jenny. Europe surpassed 75 million coronavirus cases on Friday. As the region prepares for the spread of the new Omicron variant, hospitals in some countries are already worried about the current wave. Cases of the new variant have been confirmed in more than 15 European countries. The European Union's public health agency said that the Omicron variant could be responsible for more than half of all COVID-19 infections in Europe within a few months. World Health Organization's expert held an event to answer the public about the Omicron variant. We do see across Europe um, increasing trends over two months. So this is not new and this is driven by the Delta variant. So if you add another variant of concern on top of that, the Omicron is going to complicate matters. But as Mike said, we don't know how it will unfold. So what we are asking all countries to do right now is to reassess your situation, critically reassess your situation and look at what you're doing. First, look at your vaccine, uh, access to vaccine and your vaccination policies and focus on those who are most at risk first. Um, it's not just about the number of people who have been vaccinated, it's who is vaccinated. Europe has so far recorded 79 cases of Omicron. Therefore, WHO experts highlighted the necessity of vaccination for those who are at risk and even those who are protected. There are tools out there right now that can help save your life. And these are safe and effective vaccines. With the Delta variant that is dominant, your chances of going into hospital, needing to be admitted to ICU and dying are far, far less if you are vaccinated than if you don't have that vaccine. In hope of reducing the new variant's transmission, tougher actions have been reimposed around Europe. Social distancing, lockdown measures, mandatory vaccines and flights banning.
And for more updates about the new variant Omicron spreading all over the world, let's follow this report by Marwa Bilaywar. The Utah Department of Health confirmed its first case of the variant Omicron. The individual tested positive is an adult who recently came back to Utah from a trip to South Africa. Dr. Lisha Nolan, the state's epidemiologist, said nobody who was in contact with the infected person has shown symptoms since the individual returned to Utah. The state health department announced that a Georgia resident tested positive for the new Omicron variant of the coronavirus. According to the Georgia Department of Public Health, the resident who was fully vaccinated recently traveled from South Africa to Georgia, where he stayed for two days before heading to New Jersey. The California and San Francisco Departments of Public Health and the CDC have confirmed that a recent case of COVID-19 among an individual in California was caused by the Omicron variant. The Omicron variant spread in Australia after the suspect of 13 cases and an infection in the state of Queensland. Federal authorities are planning to reopen the economy on the hope that the new variant proves to be milder than previous strains. But some state and territory governments have moved to tighten their domestic border controls. Nigeria confirmed its first case of the Omicron variant among two travelers who arrived from South Africa last week. Now the state is planning to start vaccine booster shots from next week for COVID-19, according to a senior official. French President Emmanuel Macron demanded he hadn't overlooked the killing of Saudi writer Jabal Khashoggi as he protected his choice to visit Saudi Arabia during his Gulf visit. Sid Islam. French President Emmanuel Macron arrived in Jeddah on Saturday, where he was received by Saudi Arabia's Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman as part of his Gulf tour, which began on Friday from the UAE, in which the latter made a deal with France to buy 80 Rafale jets and 12 Caracal military helicopters. Macron and Saudi Crown Prince are expected to discuss regional issues, including the Iran nuclear matter and Lebanon. The meeting took place in Jeddah where the kingdom is amid hosting its first Formula One race. It's the latest push by the young crown prince to showcase the social reforms. Meanwhile, though, the prince has also spearheaded a pervasive crackdown on human rights activists and critiques, ending up with Saudi writer Jamal Khashoggi assassination in late 2018 in Turkey, an operation that stained the prince's reputation abroad. Lebanese Information Minister George Gardahi resigned after his declaration on how the rebels arose some tensions with Saudi Arabia. Gardahi tries with his decision to strengthen the relations between Lebanon and the Gulf countries. Nabil Khazini. George Gardahi officially announced his resignation at a conference in an attempt from the Lebanese Information Minister to ease tensions with Saudi Arabia. I will not accept to be a reason to harm Lebanon or the Lebanese brothers in Saudi Arabia and other Gulf countries. Kordahi added that Prime Minister Najib Mikati had told him earlier this week that his resignation would be a condition for French President Emmanuel Macron to discuss the diplomatic crisis with Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman in Riyadh during Macron's visit to Saudi Arabia. I have understood from Mr. Najib Mirati that the French want me to resign before the visit of Emmanuel Macron to the Saudi capital Riyadh, a resignation that may help to open a discussion with the Saudi leaders about Lebanon and about the future of the Saudi-Lebanese relations. Macron said he hopes he will be able to re-engage all Gulf countries with Lebanon to help the country get out of its crisis. We will do everything to re-engage all the region in the service of Lebanon. It is important that all Gulf countries continue to help Lebanon and Lebanese people in their daily life and also for an economic openness for Lebanon. The political crisis started after Kordahi said Houthi rebels were defending themselves in their fight against the Saudi-led coalition. 
As a reaction, Riyadh banned all Lebanese imports and recalled its ambassador. The KSA has been joined by other Gulf Arab states in a boycott of Lebanon. A resignation from Kordahi comes while Lebanon was classified by the World Bank as one of the three worst economic crises in the world. Michel Aoun, the Lebanese president, moves to attract more investments from the Gulf countries in an attempt to inject new cash flow in Lebanon. Gambians are voting today Saturday to elect a new president since former President Yahya Jameh left office and fled the country in 2017. Six presidential candidates, including Adam, Adama Barrow, are running for these elections and around one million voters. Almost half of the country's population are eligible to choose a new president for Gambia. And according to World Health Organization, Ghana recorded a rising number of yellow fever cases with more than 200 confirmed cases. Vaccinations began on November the 6th, targeting over 54,000 people in 80 communities to boost prevention. The World Health Organization announced on Friday that Ghana is experiencing a yellow fever surge that started on October the 15th, with 202 suspected cases till now, of which 70 were confirmed and 35 died. Yellow fever is a viral disease transmitted by infected mosquitoes that affects people with severe symptoms of fever, jaundice, abdominal pain, vomiting, hemorrhage and kidney failure. The subject's age ranges from 4 months to 70 years with more than 50% female cases. The reported infections have been mostly in the west and central part of the country, Savannah, Upper West, Bono and Oti, and especially in nomadic populations that moved from Nigeria into a forest reserve in Savannah region. And despite an overall immune population against yellow fever in the country, there is a large community of new settlers who are unvaccinated, which will no doubt result in contamination. Efforts to catch up on vaccinations have begun since November the 6th. Initiatives targeting 80 communities in the Savannah region are improving prevention strategies. And as stated by the WHO, the region's borders with Ivory Coast and Burkina Faso are porous, providing a risk of disease spreading to other nations. However, the outbreak poses moderate national and regional danger and a low global risk. The two-decade economic boom that boosted Turkey into the middle class is beginning to loosen, threatened by a currency crisis that has people lining up for subsidized bread, cutting back on meat and fleeing for a better life in Europe. Zahra Fergeni again. Turkish lira has lost as much as 45% of its value this year, making ordinary people in Turkey poorer. Turkey's central bank has cut borrowing costs by 4 percentage points since September, in line with Erdogan's wishes, even though inflation accelerated to around 20%. Erdogan, who has been in power for some 19 years, has long argued that high interest rates cause inflation, contrary to what economists generally say, that increasing rates will decrease prices. In this context, Turkish president told an audience in the eastern city of Sirte. God willing, we will stabilize all fluctuations in prices and forex rates in not such a long time. The rate cuts have raised concerns over the bank's independence, while countries' unconventional monetary policy has surprised foreign investors who are dumping Turkish assets. Turks are rushing to trade their shrinking wages for dollars and gold, eating out less and having more trouble finding imported goods, including medicine. And for more international news, let's follow this report by Melissa Khimilat. Agreeing to a representative for U.S. Central Command and investigation has been propelled after a rebel strike against a senior Al-Qaeda leader in northwest Syria may have slaughtered civilians. The strike was pointed disturbing Al-Qaeda's operations and their capacity to arrange any attacks. The current interior minister to replace Sebastian Kurds as party leader has been picked by the governing People's Party. Mr. Niamir will be the party's third choice of chancellor in weeks after Sebastian Kurds stood down in October. The decision was made at a meeting of the center-right party's top brass in Vienna. France has announced evacuating more than 300 individuals, including 258 Afghan citizens from Afghanistan. The evacuees also included 11 French, some 60 Dutch nationals, and an unspecified number of people linked to them. A spokesman for the ministry said in a statement on Friday 
The evacuation operation was conducted with help from Qatar. The two previous nations also delivered medical equipment, food and winter supplies to Kabul. Antonio Guterres denounced Sudan's freedom of press and called Sudanese authorities to respect freedom of expression and press. UN Secretary General described the authorities as hostile to journalism after the latest events in which anti-coup rallies political activists. Journalists, protesters were arrested. A Libyan court ruled on Thursday that Saif al-Islam Qaddafi could be a candidate in the presidential election on 24th of December, as announced by the lawyer for the son of former leader Muammar Qaddafi against the backdrop of hate and tensions over an election to end a decade of war. Within the Western African nation of Mali, a militant assault took place on a bus claiming that the lives of 31 individuals and eight others injured the assault happened in eastern Mali region. The authorities stated that unknown attackers opened fire on the transport, murdering the driver and setting it on fire. Attacks have surged, killing thousands and displacing millions across Mali, Burkina Faso and Niger. Oil prices recorded $71.74 per barrel for the futures contracts for the international benchmark. Brent and the U.S. West Texas Intermediate crude futures contracts recorded $68.43 per barrel. Hassan Berkan. Despite a recent drop in oil price, OPEC and OPEC Plus decided to continue supplying the global oil market with an additional 400,000 barrels per day this January. According to the Algerian Minister of Energy and Mines, Mohamed Arkab, this comes in accordance with the cooperation agreement signed by OPEC. The minister said in a statement, we think that the market fundamentals are resilient, despite the emergence of the new mutation of corona and the resort to the use of strategic precautions. After the meeting of the Joint Ministerial Committee, where all reports related to the conditions of the global oil market and the report of the OPEC Technical Committee were studied. Economic growth is threatened as Omicron new corona variant emerged in Europe. OPEP Plus stated in a declaration that it would continue to assess the pandemic, watch the oil market carefully and be ready to make immediate adjustments if required. And has set January the 4th as the date for its next meeting. Since late October, global oil prices have dropped by more than 20%. Brent crude futures began to fall in November after the United States and other consuming nations agreed to release millions of barrels from reserves in order to cool gasoline prices and prevent further inflation. As a result, global crude futures fell over 5%, which is equivalent to $77.52 per barrel. Meanwhile, futures on U.S. crude West Texas Intermediate fell over 6%, equivalent to $73.23 per barrel. Twitter spokesman Trenton Kennedy set a new rule barring the misuse of media such as photos and videos to harass or intimidate private individuals had led it to suspend accounts in ARA, the Washington Post reported on Friday night. And from South Stadium in Qatar, the Algerian team was able to overthrow its Lebanese counterpart by two unanswered goals for the second round of the Group D of the 2021 Arab Cup. The Fenex waited until the 69th minute to shake the net of the Lebanese guard before adding in the last breath of the good match the second goal of Ziani, which allowed the Desert Warriors to win and qualify for an extremely difficult match and to see the first two red cards of Mirizak on the Algerian side and Qasim al Ziyan on the Lebanese side. It's therefore the victory and qualification that the Arab Sudanese contrapatriot Hilal sought to comfort them further before the signing that awaits them against the Egyptian team. And finally, with some sports news, let's follow this report. After Manchester United in defeat victory over Arsenal, Michael Carrick, 15 years, sat on the Red Devils team as a player and then as an assistant coach when he took off in 2018. Carrick in three games, he led as a coach leader with two wins and a tie to leave his place again named German Ralf Ragnick. Ragnick was present at the press conference yesterday and stated, and, and in the end, to be honest, if a club like Manchester United contacts you um, for such a role, you cannot possibly turn it down. 
I mean, obviously, I've watched uh, the latest games. I watched not only last night's game, but also the games against the Watford and against Chelsea and uh, on TV when I didn't know that there would, would be contact in, in the next days. I also watched out of interest the games against Liverpool and against Man Manchester City. Uh, so I'm pretty well aware and acquainted with uh, what's happening here in the club and in the Premiership. Ragnik said he tried to persuade Michael Carrick, who announced his start while the club was 10 points away from the podium, to stay in the Old Trafford after defeating Arsenal on Thursday. Yeah, I, I got to know this uh, two days ago um, and I met with Michael and with Kieran, but especially with Michael two days ago. I had a long uh, private conversation with him for more than an hour. I talked to Michael for over an hour and I tried to persuade him, but he needed a break and I understood his decision, said the former Leipzig coach. And now it's time to have a reminder of our main top stories. Diplomats negotiating in Vienna to revive Iran's 2015 nuclear deal with world powers have closed after five days of talks after EU and US concerns. Europe crossed 75 million coronavirus cases as the region braces for the new Omicron variant at a time when hospitals in some countries are already strained by the current surge. And militants killed at least 31 people in central Mali when they fired on the Baskarian civilians heading to a local market. That's all for me and the rest of the team. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.